Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers, and in this video, we're continuing our Linux Plus certification prep. We're talking about mounting file systems, and this is one of those videos where I could go super deep into so many different aspects of mounting file systems, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover enough that you will understand what you need to know for the exam, and if there are areas that I think might be interesting for you to dive deeper into, I'll try to mention it along the way. We're currently in objective 1.3 on the Linux Plus objectives. I'm calling this 1.3.3. This is our third video as we explore this objective. And like I said, specifically, we're going to look at mounting local and remote file systems or devices. And remote devices is important here because we're not talking about remote file systems like over the network. We're going to talk about that over here. Uh, specifically, remote devices are like externally attached, like a USB drive, that sort of a thing. So we're going to cover the things in here, including encryption very briefly and uh, that should give us a good feel for what's going on and i don't want to start this video without thanking everybody over here you might notice it's actually scrolling now because we've had even another person who has uh, decided to be a patreon supporter of mine i am so grateful and humbled and it makes me so excited to continue to make more and more content whether it's videos or, or whatever it is that you might be supporting me for so anyway thank you to my patreon supporters if that's something you're interested in uh link will be down below but let's get into how we can actually mount file systems on Linux. So just a quick rundown of what I have set up in the folder MNT. I've created just three empty folders or directories called drive one, drive two, and drive three. We're going to use those as places to mount our drives or devices. So I have those things created. And if we look at LS uh, BLK, I'm going to do dash E7, which will filter out all of those uh, loop devices. It will show us that we have, of course, SDA is our system hard drive. I'm not really going to touch that. That's the that's what our in, our system is installed on. Uh, but I have some other devices here too. I have SDB, SDC, and SDD. Uh, SDR is actually our CD ROM. Uh, but I've created a partition on each of these drives, just one partition that takes up the entire 10 gigabytes. Okay. Now, if we actually do another command here, dash F it will show us what file systems are uh, formatted on there, if there are any. So here you'll see SDB1 has an ext4 file system already put on it. SDC1 has uh, ButterFS, BTRFS, uh, the file system is formatted on it. And SDD1 doesn't have any file system at all. It's just a raw partition. We're gonna use that later for encryption. Uh, so anyway, these two, um, have things that have a file system already installed on it, which means we should be able to mount it into our Linux file system. So let's do that first of all with SDB1. And this is just how we go about doing it manually. So we would say sudo because we need root privilege. Now I say that it is possible to have something set up so that a user can mount it without root access. That's kind of beyond where we're going to go today. That's like user mounting options, which has to be set up for individual mounts. We're going to use root access to mount all of these uh, drives onto our system because at the end of the day, it requires root access, but you can set it up so that a user can initiate the mount. Anyway, we're going to be, we're going to have root access to do this. So sudo mount, and then the device that we want to mount in our case, let's do dev sdb1, and then where we want to mount it, uh, mnt will say drive one. Now I could add another flag before I do this. I could say dash T for what type is it? And we know that it's ext4, but that is almost always auto detected. We very rarely have to specify what type of file system it is. And in fact, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't auto detect the file system, chances are there's something wrong and it's not going to mount anyway. So I'm not going to put that on there. But if you see somebody specify dash T and then the file system type, that's why it's a way to tell mount what kind of file system to expect but you can see it usually auto detects it just fine. If we do it, if we do a DF minus H, uh, we're gonna see that now we have this device mounted on MNT drive one, and it's able to be used now on our system. It's part of our file system. Now mounting things manually is great, but it's really not that practical, especially if it's hard drives that you want to have automatically mount when the system boots up. And so generally what we do is create entries in the etc. FS tab file, which file system tab. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna show you how to do right now is how you would make a mount permanent on the system. So let's unmount this drive. And to do that, sudo umount, it's not 
un, it's not you and mount it's you mount for unmount which is a little confusing sometimes but you mount and then mnt uh, drive one so then it will unmount if we look it's no longer mounted on our system uh, so let's look at uh, etc fs tab here is where we can make an entry and there is a little cheat sheet up top here that will explain how you can specify what you want it to mount when the system starts up. So the first field is what file system, and that can be specified in a number of ways. In fact, it's specified a couple ways right here. Uh, you can see UUID equals, and then this UUID, that can be how we specify it. We could just use a device like dev SDA2. Uh, we could use a label that we have formatted on the partition. So there's a lot of different things that we can specify as what file system is that we want. So in this case, let's actually, I, I just did the device on the command line. So let's get out of here really quickly. And if we do sudo blkid, and I'm going to get rid of all the loopback devices, this will show us all the partitions on our system. And the one that we were just looking at is uh, devsdb1. And so this has a UUID of this right here. Now I'll point out right here, since we're, since we're looking at this block ID information, this is the UUID. This is the unique, uh, universal unique identifier for the file system that is installed. However, there's also the partition UUID, which is pointing to the actual partition on the hard drive that the file system is written to. So if you, and that, if that seems confusing, hopefully this will help. If we look down here at dev SDD one, you may remember this is a, a partition that does not have a file system put on it yet. And this still has a part UUID, a partition UUID, but it does not have a UUID because there's no file system formatted on this partition yet, okay? Now, the cool thing is we can actually specify in file F or in et cetera, FS tab using either UUID or part UUID. Generally, you'll see this done either by the device, which in our case is gonna be dev SDB one or the UUID. So let's, let's do this UUID. This is going to be that device copy. And now if we do sudo bi, et cetera, FS tab, and now I'm going to paste that. So that's the file system. This is the device. This is that first field. And then where we want it to mount, that's just going to be MNT drive one. The next field is the type. So here we do actually have to put the file type, which is, or the file system type, which is ext four. And then the next one is what options. I'm just going to say defaults. We don't need any specific options in there. And then the next two are a little bit confusing. Uh, dump is very rarely used at all anymore. So we're going to put a zero here. What dump is talking about is you could do like a file system backup. Uh, it would like dump the contents of a partition or, or a mounted device. It, it's just not done anymore. It was dump FS. It's just not done anymore. So zero means like, no, we're not going to do that. And then pass talks about how often you want to do a file system check. We're going to look at file system check in probably the next video. Uh, but there's three options. It's either zero, one, or two. Zero means don't do any file system checks. One means I want you to do file system checks, and this is the root partition. Well, this is not the root partition. And so two would be, I want you to do file system checks, but this is not a root partition. All right. So I guess this would be the way to go, either a two or a zero. I'm just going to leave it at zero. Um, then we save this. And now when the system boots up, it will automatically mount that onto mount drive one. But if you look right now, it's not mounted. So we can say sudo mount dash a, which will reread that FS tab file and mount all the things that are in there. So if we do that and now we look, now it's mounted and it will mount every time the system is rebooted. Now the Linux plus objective specifically says external devices, which is a little bit of a weird thing. It's not something we do very often. Uh, and this makes me think of a USB drive. Now, if it's like a USB stick, most distributions, especially if they have a GUI installed, will just automatically mount it when you put it in and then when you take it out, it's, you know, unmounted. However, let's say you have a, like a really large uh, USB drive. It's like an external, you know, USB, like, I don't know, 20 terabytes or something. And you want to have it treated like a regular hard drive on your system, but it connects via USB. Well, it is possible to actually have those treated like a regular drive. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up a USB drive uh, so that it doesn't 
automatically mounts and unmount when we plug it into the USB connector, but treat it more like an internal hard drive on our system. And here's the thing. Normally when you plug in a USB drive, and I have one just out of camera here, it will do what it just did here. It will automatically mount that USB stick. And if we look down here, DF minus H, it mounts it somewhere like in the media folder. And this is the auto mounter that looks for USB drives and it will do that automatically. But let's say like, like I just discussed that we want this to be treated like a regular hard drive. Well, let's do, let's unmount it first. So you mount media S powers USB stick. Now let's do a pseudo BLK ID grep dash V loop. And let's see if we can find that device. Yes, it's right here. So dev SDE1 is that partition. Uh, I unmounted it, but it's still inserted into the system. And so we can create uh, an entry in etc. FS tab for this. And now remember I said we can specify these based on a lot of things like a device. The problem is with a USB device specifically, let's say we plugged in another USB stick before this one. And so the other one was SDE and then this one was SDF. So using a device name, particularly with something that might change is not a great idea. So in this case, we would either want to use the UUID, which, you know, we have a UUID or you could use a label. Uh, and for something like this, I would probably use a label. My rationale here is that you can actually label different USB disks the same thing. And so if you always want your USB drive to mount on the same spot, you could just label them the same, whichever one's plugged in is going to be there. But nonetheless, label is one more way we can specify it. Let's take this label USB underscore stick, VI, et cetera, FS tab. And the same thing as before, we're just going to make another entry. This time though, we're going to say label equals USB underscore stick. And then I want this one mounted in MNT drive two. And this is going to be, but well, what was the file system on there? Let's look. I'm going to go back and look. It looks like a uh, VFAT. So this is a, it's a DOS based thing, basically. So the type is VFAT. It's right here. So we'll go back in and VFAT is our type default. So I'm going to say zero, zero again, save this. And now. Again, it's not mounted because we U mounted it. However, if we were to say sudo mount dash a now, all of a sudden that drive is going to be mounted uh, in mount drive two. And now when we reboot the system, as long as that USB drive is in, even if it's not recognized in the same order, it should mount on that location instead of uh, us having to like put it in and have it auto mount detected by the GUI operating system, that sort of thing. It should be treated just like a regular uh, hard drive on the system and mount at boot. But you want to know a little secret? System D actually does all of the mounting. The etc. FS tab file used to be where everything was read from and mounted right from there, but not anymore. Now, system D looks at our FS tab file and creates on the fly individual um, system D mount files, and that is what it uses to mount them. Let me show you. If we go to our system here and we go into run system D generator, and we look at all the files in here, we're going to see a couple specifically this is the the one that is generated on boot so the dash here is just referring to the root partition but here is the deal let's look at it this is auto generated by reading the fs tab file and it creates this file on the fly and this is actually how it mounts on the system now we can create our own dot mount files in mount devices into directories using this method However, this is not what is generally recommended. It's still recommended to use the etc. FS tab file to spell out all of the mounts that you want, even though they're converted to system D mount files. However, it is possible to use a system D mount file if you have a reason to do that and you want to specify uh, in a, a file like this. But to do that, uh, I'm not gonna dive too deep into system D, but if you have custom things that you uh, create for system D, they're going to be put into etc. system D system. This is where the user generated files are put. And there's probably already a bunch of stuff in here, but we're going to create a simple mount file and we're going to put it in here. So I'm going to do sudo vi and this is, it has to be in a very specific format. Okay. It has to represent 
uh, by name where the end result is going to be. So we have to do something like vimnt dash drive three dot mount. Because if you remember, I created that directory in mount drive three. And so we have to name the mount file exactly this or it won't work. So we're creating this file and I'm just going to make it very, very simple. Unit description, mount drive three, and then a little mount section, what equals, and then this is the device that we actually want to uh, use. So this is device, the device that we're going to mount. So let's get the UUID from a device. Pseudo KID, drop dash V looped, so the loops don't show up. And the device that I want to mount in here is this one, dev SDC one, and it has this UUID for the file system. So I'm going to copy this. Go back into here. And this is a little bit goofy. This is kind of how you specify it. Dev disk by UUID and then the actual UUID. So I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. So we specify that is what device and then where is the next option here and where is going to be mount drive three and it has to be here because remember that's what we named the file type equals btrfs which is what it said it was options equal defaults and i don't know if this part is required but generally multi user dot target and that just means that it will call this uh when we start multi-user mode on boot all right so i'll save that and now we have to do sudo systemctl daemon reload so that it sees that mount file that we've created. This is just more uh, systemd stuff. And then we treat it just like we would a service. So we can say sudo systemctl start mnt drive three mount. And now if we do df minus h, it's mounted it right here. Now this will not automatically start on boot because just like a systemd service, we would have to do sudo systemctl enable mount drive three dot mount. So we do that and now it will actually mount that on boot even though it's not in our FS tab file. So again, it's possible to do that. And if you put it in, et cetera, system D system and you name it properly, it will mount on system boot but it's still not generally the way that we go about doing it. Normally we still use the et cetera FS tab file because it's one place that we can put all of our file systems and that's uh, will be converted automatically. So we don't have to worry about the system D side of it. And then you only have one place to remember to store all of your system mounts. That said, the one last thing we have to cover is an encrypted file system using Luke's. So back here on Ubuntu, I'm going to create one more directory. I'm going to, um, make directory mount secret. We're going to use this directory for an encrypted file system. Now, if you remember LSBLK, we have these devices down here. So the one that we haven't messed with at all is SDD one. This is a partition. There's no file system on it at all. So we're going to create an encrypted partition. And to do that, we use the crypt setup tool. So crypt, actually, I'm going to do sudo crypt setup. Luke's format dev sdd1. So it's going to overwrite it completely because it's creating uh, this encrypted partition. So I'm going to, it says, are you sure? Type yes in capital letters. So yes in capital letters. Now I have to enter a passphrase. Okay. This is how it's going to decrypt. If you don't remember this passphrase, your data is lost, right? There's, there's not a recovery function if you can't remember your passphrase. So it's generally something long. Mine is not going to be really long. And now it is an encrypted partition, but it's not open. In order to access the partition itself so that we can write data to it, we have to uh, decrypt it and open it in a decrypted state. So in order to do that, we use the same tool, sudo crypt setup, but we say open and then what the device is. So dev sdd1, and then what we want it to be named in its unencrypted state. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully it does, hopefully it does. Uh, we're gonna call it secret disk. I have to enter the passphrase. Okay, and now I think it shows up with uh, LS block, uh, sorta. I mean, it is called secret disk, but it's going to live in dev mapper. 
okay? In DevMapper, Secret Disk is that de currently decrypted file system. So what we would do is write a file system on there, because right now it's just a, a an encrypted partition that's currently open and decrypted, and that's how we access it. So we're just gonna do sudo mkfs.ext4. I'm just gonna make an ext4 file system on it. Dev mapper secret disk. Okay, it's all done. And now let's uh, mount it. So we're gonna say sudo mount dev mapper secret disk on mount secret. And now, sure enough, it is there, and we should be able to access it. So let's uh, go into, so I'm just going to become root, mount secret. Okay, there's a lost in file, touch file.txt. All right, sure enough, it's there. So let's get out of there. And now to unmount it, we would do the same thing backwards, right? We would just say, you mount, mount secret. Okay, it's uh, no longer mounted. And then it's still available in an unencrypted form, though. So what we would have to do is say, crypt setup close dev sdd one Oop, just actually the name of it which for us is secret disk okay and now we can no longer access it without retyping in our password i know that was a lot there's one more thing that i it isn't really specified but i do want to show you you can actually automatically have it mount on boot and it will prompt you during boot up for the passphrase in order to continue and actually mount the file system on boot. There's also ways you can create keys and have them stored in special places like on a USB drive that you plug in. Uh, but let's quickly set up an automatic that uh, an automatic mount that will prompt us on boot uh, to unencrypt the drive. And then we'll be done. So let's do the LK ID. So this is our device. Let's get the UUID of this device. This is our crypto Luke's device itself. So I'm going to copy the UUID. And what we need to do is when the system boots up, it will look in a file called etc crypt tab. So we have to create this file. And in here, we actually specify what it is we want it to decrypt. And so the first field is what we want it to be called. In our case, I want it to be called secret drive. And then the next field is going to be that UUID of the actual Luke's partition itself. And then the third field uh, is just, I'm just going to put a dash. This is where we could tell it like to have a key that we would automatically uh, decrypt it. But if we just put a dash here, it's going to prompt us for that passphrase as it tries to create secret drive. Okay, so that it should be all we need to do. And then if we look in FS tab, then we can assume that we've entered our passphrase. Dev mapper secret drive is going to be in mount secret. And this is just ext4 defaults zero, zero. That should be all it takes to get it to automatically mount after it prompts us for the passphrase on boot. So let's reboot the system and see what happens. Okay, it's asking us right here for the passphrase. So let's put that in. All right, we've booted up. Let's have a quick look. TF minus H. And we have drive one is mounted, drive two is mounted, drive three is mounted, and drive mount secret is mounted. So all of the things that we set up uh, survived the reboot, including that one that we did with system D and automatically mounting this by prompting us for that passphrase on boot. I know that was a lot to cover and I encourage you to look deeper into things like auto mount because that's really fun, but it's not part of the Linux plus uh, objectives. But anyway, hopefully all this made sense. Maybe you have to go back through and watch it. I encourage you to try it on your own system to make sure that you can replicate what's going on as we went along doing it. And uh, this is another example of how important it is to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I know this was a long one, but I'll see you in the next video.